Are you blessed and highly favored? This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Isn't that wonderful? Turn to your neighbor and tell him you got to choose. You can be miserable and stay home until you find Jesus, or you can get in the presence of God and rejoice. Hallelujah. But if you're a Christian and you're miserable, don't tell anybody you know Jesus. Amen? Because he's not miserable. Oh, praise God. Wonderful things are happening. We are in such a time and season right now, it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. I want to share one, something specific before we can get going. I want you to know that this is the calm before the storm. But there's a storm coming. There's a storm coming. And the storm is going to do much damage. The storm is going to expose more. It's going to cause a lot of things to happen. But I'm telling you, if you're tight with the Lord and you're hiding in the secret place in Him, you got nothing to worry about. Amen? Amen? You got nothing to worry about. Because God is good all the time. Amen? He's good all the time. <laughs> Would you grab your swords, please, to Revelation chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. Revelation chapter 1. On April 15th, 2000, uh, 2000, 1993, at around 2.15 p.m., I was abducted. I was abducted in the presence of God. I didn't know Jesus was God. <laughs> I didn't know anything. I never believed the Bible. I didn't know nothing. But when I called out on his name, I repented for my sins. He showed up, and the cloud of glory took me and brought me to the other side. Opened my eyes to see and ears to hear and heart. I realized that it was the presence of God that I've been looking for my whole life. Trying to find him in drugs, fame, money, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It was all false. It was a lie. I realized I've been lied to my whole life. When I realized that in his presence, I realized how I was his son and he was my dad. Nothing about religion. It had nothing to do about religious stuff. That's Satan stuff. Amen. It's all garbage. Jesus desires relationship with me and you. He paid the price for me and you. So that we would know the Father just like a dad. Amen. That's why Abba Father, Daddy. He's my dad. I, 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 I not, it blew me away. I realized that I met my dad. And then an evil serpent came out of my body. My 80-pound Doberman dog began to fight it. I didn't know what the heck to do. And I looked at the Lord and was like, what do I do? And next thing I know, my hand went towards this black, evil, hissing thing that was trying to bite my dog. And these words came out of my mouth. From the love of God, I curse you, Satan. And this thing curled up and moved away from my dog. Of course, I looked at the Lord and I said, man, this stuff only happens in Star Trek. <laughs> he said, no, guy, that came out of you. I was never the same. Never. Amen. Never used again. Never went back. Wanted to love him more, know him more. I realized then that in that arena of his presence, we, we've got, when lacking of his presence brings another presence. When he shared with me that the ruler of this world was Satan and his kingdom, I realized, my gosh, and he shared with me that's all he wants to do is bring religions and false doctrines and all kinds of other things to keep God's people away and distract them from knowing the truth. So I thought being born again in the Spirit, when you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it happens to everyone just like it happened to me. But I found out it didn't. It was discouraging for a moment, but then it was grateful that it happened to me. <laughs> Totally changed me, flipped me. Introduced me to the Holy Spirit. I used to call Buddy. Buddy. See, I was, I, was, I, I was a second grade level reader. I couldn't read. He taught me how to read. I read more books in the first year I was saved in my whole life. The words he kept telling me, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Strengthens me. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I kept speaking and every time I began to stumble and I bust through. 
Why? Because what you speak is what you eat, and what you eat is what you become. As you speak the words of life and light, light and life becomes in you more and more and more. And the scales begin to come off of your eyes. Then you're able to see through the natural into the spiritual. And then you fight for position. Because see, now you have a fight that you, you're fighting for the presence of God, not for your life. You're fighting for his life in you. That's what the fight is about. But too many people give up and quit. They get religious. They lose a relationship. And the enemy loves to break that relationship. His, that's his job. He does it very good. That's why the word says the letter kills and the spirit brings life. You know, I didn't even want to read the Bible when I got saved. Because I was afraid. I didn't want to be like a hypocrite because I saw so many hypocrites out there. And I kept saying to the Lord, he kept saying, I want you to learn my Bible. And I kept saying, why? I can hear your voice. Just tell me what to do. Show me. He said, no, I want you to know my Bible. I want you to know my word. See, because in my visitation from the Lord, the first thing he said was, my Bible is true because he knew. When I was a kid, a priest came up to me and said, the Bible's nothing but a story. What the heck? I, want, I don't want any more stories. I want to know who I was, why I'm here, and where am I going. I want truth. But I didn't want to read about truth. I met truth. Amen. Realizing that truth was a person. It's called, his name is called Jesus. That's why he is the way, the truth, and the life. And the world is actually looking for truth. But they're being deceived and going wrong paths. They're getting involved in religious acts and not relationship. They don't know the voice of God or the presence of God. They know the letters of God. But only those who are led by the Spirit of God are called sons of God. That's the difference. So we want to be led by the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is released to me and you in, in the day of your acceptance of Jesus Christ. And then there's a next step, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you get your heavenly language. Thank God nobody knows what it is. Unless the Spirit gives you interpretation. You know why? Because the devil knows what you think. Never let anybody tell you the devil don't know what you think. He's a spirit. He knows exactly what you think. He knows what you pray, and he's going to try and interfere with everything. The only thing he don't know, he cannot interpret tongues. Does everybody get it? That's why we pray in the Spirit. And the Word says, come together, magnify the Lord by praying in tongues. So you magnify Him. But again, we are in a season now, if you look all over, there's chaos, there's all kinds of stuff. There's hatred and jealousies. Big time, the Word tells us that in the last days, imposters would grow worse, evil would grow worse. But there's great exposure going on, isn't there? Because God's getting ready to bring the earlier and latter rain. It's trickling now but it's going to come full-blown. That's why it's a calm before the storm. Because when God brings revival, there's usually chaos. <laughs> so you just got to stay drunk in the spirit. <laughs> you know, drunks don't care what goes on. <laughs> you must be close to him like you've never been close before. In Revelation chapter 1, is everybody there? Oh, glory. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and in his presence is what? Fullness of joy. So when people are miserable, you know what they lack? God's presence. Revelation 1 and verse 4, let's speak it. <clears throat> John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and made us what? Kings and priests to his kingdom, his God and Father, and to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. In other words, we are to become a kingdom of kings and priests. Now, a king is considered a warrior. 
And a priest is one who ministers to the Lord and his sanctuary. Does everybody get it? So you and I are to become a part of a kingdom of kings and priests. These are called positions. And in these positions, there is positional blessings. Is everybody with me? In these positions, there's positional blessings. Now, we know that getting dressed as a warrior in Ephesians 6, it's the full armor of God, right? Okay. Now, if you were to put the full armor of God on, and they use it as a, like a Roman soldier or type of thing, it's kind of metal and it hurts, you know? You need under, you need under armor, you know what I'm saying? Now, under armor is called priestly garments. So you can't fulfill kingship without fulfilling priesthood. It is the first office you and I are to fulfill in the kingdom. And what does a priest do? He ministers to the Lord. Does everybody get it? He ministers to the Lord. Without ministering to the Lord, you can't get dressed with God's presence and you can't get dressed with the full armor of God. So these are positions that God has for me and you. We are called to fulfill these positions. And in these positions, there are called positional blessings from God. In 1 Samuel chapter 2. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter 2. In verse 27. Positional blessings. So what is the enemy's objective? To get you out of what? Position. <clears throat> and verse 27, is over there? Let's speak it. Then the man of God came to Eli and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Did I clearly reveal myself to the house of your father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? Did I not choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my what? Priest. To offer up upon my altar and to burn incense and to wear an ephod before me. And did I not give to the house of your father all the offerings of the children of Israel made by fire? Why did you kick at my sacrifice and my offering, which I have commanded in my dwelling place, and honor your sons more than me? Whoa. And honor your what? Your children more than me. To make yourselves fat with the best of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Therefore, the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, far be it from me. So the Lord changed his mind, didn't he? Why? Because they were out of order. And they, he warned them multiple times, but he wouldn't take the warning. He rejected it. They rejected it. So he says, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me, surely be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days are coming that I will cut off your arm and the arm of your father's house so that there will not be an old man in your house. And you will see an enemy in my dwelling place despite all the good which, the God, which God has done for Israel. And there shall not be an old man in your house forever. But any of your men whom I do not cut off from my altar shall consume your eyes and grieve your heart. And all the descendants of your house shall die in the flower of their age. Now this shall be a sign to you that will come upon your two sons of Hephani and Phinehas. In one day they shall die, both of them. Now I want you to know that his sons were fornicating in the sanctuary. And Eli the prophet at that time didn't do nothing about it. He might have scolded them, but he didn't press it. And God, and, and God warned Eli multiple times. 
quit allowing your children to disgrace my sanctuary. And verse 35, Then I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. How many of y'all want to be a faithful priest? Amen. I will build him a sure, a sure house, and he will walk before my anointed forever. And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left in your house will come and bow down to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread and say, Please put me in one of the priestly what positions that I may what eat a piece of bread. Priestly position. In other words, we talked about spiritual ble uh, positional blessings. These positional blessings, when God sees that you're fulfilling priesthood, there's a priestly position. God is the provider and the blesser. Amen? This is also associated with the second chamber of the tabernacle. In the second chamber of the tabernacle is where the anointing of priesthood is. So, does everybody understand that? Salvation is the first chamber, priesthood is the second chamber, and kingship is the third chamber. And he desires that me and you fill every position. And it, the anointing increases in your life. Each chamber has a function and position, a level of anointing that you and I must reach. Amen? Is everybody okay? Okay. So this priestly position, God, and God does, he releases the blessings. He's a provider. Again, it's associated with the second chamber of the tabernacle. It's also associated with the second level of death, Amen. discipline, obedience, and, of course, the anointing of the Lord. All of these are what we call qualified. Amen? You and I must reach a level of qualification. He qualifies. The God, listen, People think so many times that, you know, grace is uh, unmerited favor. Grace is not unmerited favor. Grace is unmerited love. You earn God's favor. Amen? Because trust is earned. In Psalm 16, positional blessings. The word says that we are blessed at every what? Spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. So we're already seated in there, but we have to fulfill them on this side. Psalm 16. Oh, hallelujah. And the price to be paid is called cooperation. <laughs> If you're not willing to cooperate with the Spirit, you're not going to get there. Psalm 16, is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak this together. Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. O my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones whom all my delight their sorrow shall be multiplied who hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. O Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. Is that a blessing? Yeah. I will bless the Lord who has given me what? Counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Now listen, I want you to look at something here because it's powerful. He said, I will bless the Lord who's given me counsel. How many of y'all know counsel puts you in position? Amen. He says, at night my heart's going to be instructed by who? The Holy Spirit. He says, I put the Lord always before me. That's called relationship. If the Lord is not before you, there's no relationship. None. Everything you and I do, the Lord should always be before you. You should see him and look to him. And want to know if what you're doing is pleasing him or dis displeasing him. The Lord should always, every decision, everything you and I do, everywhere we go. 
What do you think, Lord? How do we want to do this? Amen? Does everybody get this? This is called relationship. Amen? Not religion. So he says, I, uh, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be what? Moved what? Out of position. Amen? I shall not be moved out of position. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in the hope. For you will not leave my soul in shield, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the what? Path of life. Why? Because you are positioned. Your presence is fullness of joy, and you will maintain the joy of the Lord. And at your right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. Why? Because positional blessings. Has everybody got that? God releases blessings while you and I are in position. Did you ever notice how things changed immediately and quickly? When you come to the Lord, all of a sudden, man, it's like he's moving heaven and earth. It seems like no matter what you do, there's, man, that's, this God. You, everything is God, 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 God. Everything. And he's wanting to do is build your faith. He wants you to know that he is real. He's alive. And he's for you and not against you. The next thing you know, when you're baptized and you're speaking in this other language, man, what a touch from God. You're like, whoa, he is real. And the next thing you know, you're having dreams and visions and blessings are coming. Things you didn't even ask for, but you thought begin to manifest. Why? Because he's making himself so real to you that you'll never, never lose sight that he is real and you are his child. Amen? But the enemy still wants to get you out of position. No matter what. <laughs> Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Amen. The calm before the storm, amen? amen. We got to get in position. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He provides everything there. That's called the tabernacle. Actually, that is the third chamber of the tabernacle because the shadow of the Almighty is the wings of the cherubim. Woohoo! Second Chronicles 20, verse 14. Now, King Jehoshaphat, who was the king of Judah, uh, he had a fight going on that he could not win. <laughs> so he sought the Lord. He said, man, I don't have enough military compared to all the military that's around me. And so the Spirit of the Lord came upon a gentleman. In verse 14, and the Spirit of the Lord, come on, speak it together. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Jezah, Hazah, Haz, yeah, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Manatha, a Levite of the sons of Ashva in the midst of the assembly. And he said to them, listen, all of you, Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid. Now, wait a minute. Do not be afraid. Let me tell you, afraid, fear will move you out of position. People fear. Not enough money, not enough this, not enough that. Not enough of is fear. How am I going to do this? How am I? Fear. And the reason why fear comes is because they lack God's presence. Fear will nullify God's presence if you allow it to. He said to them, do not fear nor, uh, uh, nor dismay because of the great multitude that's coming against you. For the battle is not yours, but who? God's. Now, he says, tomorrow go down to against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Zid, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. You will not need to fight in this battle if you do something. Position. Position yourself 
Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. Now, I want you to understand, O Judah and Jerusalem, position is essential. It's not in just physically being positioned. It's spiritually positioned. It's the position of your mind and your thoughts and your heart. All of these things take course in positioning. And when you are in position, you get spiritual blessings from the Lord. Positional blessings. He said, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is what? With you. Oh, I love that. The Lord is who? With you. Go to verse 20. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be what? Established. Believe what he says, and you shall be established. Now this is good here. Are you ready? Believe in his prophets, and you shall what? Prosper. In other words, there is a prophetic release that God speaks. Does everybody understand it? You are hearing a prophetic release right now. If you're willing to accept and believe what the Spirit of the Lord says, because it's not this dude, it's the anointing that teaches me and you. If you're willing to receive the prophetic word of the Lord and position yourself, you will prosper. Amen. Verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing. Who should what? Sing. Sing it down. Hey, listen, David danced in his underwear, Amen. Now, we don't need to go that far, but we can just dance and enjoy the Lord. <laughs> you can dance in your underwear at home, but in the sanctuary, why don't we be respectful to one another? <laughs> you know, people sing in the shower, right? I mean, what the heck? You dance in the shower. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord. In other words, they're fulfilling priesthood now. And who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. That's what we need, man. We need some praise and worship teams on destroyers. Amen. Why? Because this is not a physical fight. It's a spiritual fight manifesting in the physical realm. Amen. They need praise and worship teams on destroyers, on aircraft carriers. They need to put them in the fighter jets. Everybody praise the Lord. I'm telling you, we kick some butt. Hallelujah. Now, here's cool. Now, when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, God did what? Set ambushes against the people of Mount Moab and Mount Sira who had come against Judah, and they were what? They didn't even, listen, these guys didn't have to wep, pick up a weapon. The weapon was in their mouth. There is life and death in the power of the tongue. For the people of Oman and Moab stood against the inhabitants of Mount Sira to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Sira, they helped to destroy one another. They killed each other. Talk about God bringing confusion in the enemy's camp. Why? Through praise and worship. See, while you're praising and you're worshiping, you're getting filled. God is releasing revelation to you, maybe some conviction. Amen? And as you repent, because you got to repent, because the blood always goes before the Spirit. Amen? The Spirit likes a clean place. While you're doing all this and jumping and dancing and having a good time, God's kicking butt on your enemy. He's ambushing them then. Does everybody get it? Oh, hallelujah. Now let's go a little further. Verse 24. So when Judah had come to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there were their dead bodies falling on the earth. No one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their what? Spoil. Is that blessings? Uh, what do he say? Get positioned. Praise and worship. Why? Because praise and worship gets you in position. And they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were there three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Position to praise and worship. God provides blessings of protection, <laughs> destroys your enemies by ambushing them, <laughs> keeps you in his presence, and it releases open doors for positional blessings of provision. Releases. See, we have to get into a place where God 
can release. People don't realize the word says, sow in the spirit and you'll reap what? Life and peace. Sow in the flesh and you'll reap corruption. So while you're praising and worshiping the Lord, you're sowing in the spirit. Now you're reaping life and peace. You're giving God an opportunity to unlock doors. You're giving God an opportunity to unlock the handcuffs. Because many people don't even realize that they have handcuffs on themselves. And they don't realize that they've tied the hands of God to work on their own behalf. They cry out to God, but he's saying, do this. If you'll do this, I'll do that. That's called position. So there must be a requirement so that you can get in position. Then once you get in position, there's a requirement that will release the blessings. Let me tell you, he wants to bless our socks off. Or he wants to bless you with more socks. One or the other. But he just wants to bless you. The greatest blessing that you can give God is your worship. That's how you show him thank you. Why? Because you've got to eat humble pie. Amen? you got to deny yourself because pride and arrogance, God rejects. He says he gives grace to the humble, but he rejects the proud. Amen? Amen? Is everybody okay? Psalm 1. Not someone, someone. Positional blessings. Glory. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? What's the first? Let's start from the first verse. Let's speak it. Blessed. Everyone say blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Cursed. Yeah, it's common sense. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of ungodly or worldly counsel. Nor does he stand in the path of sinners and liars. And, or sits in the seats of the scornful hatred, grumbling and complaining. But his delight is in the law of the Lord or the truth. And in his law, he what? He meditates. In other words, he learns. He exchanges the things that he believes for the things that God believes. In his law, he meditates day and night. And look at when a person does this, because he's rejecting the counsel of the world and receiving the counsel of the Spirit. He says, this is what you'll be like. You shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Be on a tree planted by the rivers of water means you're drinking of the Spirit all the time. That brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall what? Prosper. It's called positional blessing. Why? Because now you are positioned next to the river of living water. And your roots will grow into that river and you will constantly drink from that river. He says in verse 4, but the ungodly, those who reject the counsel of the Lord are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment or the reward, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly, the rebellious, shall what? Perish. See, again, we need to get in that place where we are positioned thoughts by exchanging worldly ways for his ways. Every day we should make an exchange. Lord, I exchange my heart for your heart, my will for your will, my thoughts for your thoughts, my words for your words, my presence for your presence, my sicknesses and deeds for your stripes and healings, my lack for your abundance, and my life for your glory. Exchanging. There's an exchange prayer in that booklet that we got. I encourage everyone to read it. Is everybody Okay. Psalm 37. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 37, verse 27.
Let's speak it together, please. Depart from what? Evil. Depart from evil. Well, that means you got distracted. Amen? Either there or you're stepping into something where it's evil and the Lord is saying, get out of there. Have you ever been somewhere and the Lord's like, get out? Man, I have. He's like, get out of there. Depart from evil and do good. And dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. But the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit. And inheritance is a blessing, isn't it? The land and dwell in it forever. Are you ready? The mouth of the righteous does what? Speaks wisdom. And his tongue talks of justice. The law of the Lord is in his heart. And none of his steps shall slide. Powerful. Depart from evil. Leave that position and inherit the blessing. The mouth and the tongue are the position that you and I are to use. Because what you speak is what you eat. Amen? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. You are able to drive out forces of evil with your mouth, with your tongue. So in this, it brings position. And it brings position by decree of promises. It brings position by declaration of truth and justice. Decree of promises and declarations of truth and justice. Keeping the heart and position of purity and allowing the Lord to perfect our steps. Keeping us in position. Amen? So he can release spiritual blessings by being in position. Oh, hallelujah. And James chapter 1. James chapter 1. In verse 12. James chapter 1, verse 12. Is everybody there? Amen. Blessed is who? Demand it what? Amen. That overcomes temptation. That's distraction. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which is a blessing which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away from his desires, his emotional desires and enticed. Then when, he desires, then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full-blown, brings forth death. Now look at this. He says, do not be deceived, my beloved. Why? He cuts, talks about a blessing. Every good gift and every precious gift is from above and comes from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Why? Because that he's saying, look at this good gift is coming, this blessing is coming because you didn't get pushed out of position. You maintain position when you were tempted by the voice of desire. Amen? Amen? That emotional voice. Overcome influence of the enemy to get you out of position will prepare a gift. <laughs> God is preparing when you overcome. Why? Because he loves to release the blessing. Positional blessings. Listen, many expect positional blessings when they're not in position. Amen. That's called false entitlement. Thank you. They haven't earned it. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. 2 Corinthians 6. Why? Because they haven't positioned themselves. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 11, O Corinthians, we have not, have we spoken <clears throat> openly to you? Our heart is wide open. You are not what? Restricted. You're not restricted. 
You're not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own what? Affections. These are desires. In other words, things that want. Now, in return for the same, I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. So he's trying to share with us, look it, these are the things that will move you out of position. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion is light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial, and what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them, I will walk among them, I'll be their God, and they shall be my people. If they do what? That word therefore means if. If they what? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you, and you will be a, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Again, restricted from positional blessings because of the emotional decisions, wants, and desires, causing false agreements and open doors to the voice of the stranger, which is unclean, and it causes... <laughs> A, a temporary misplace of position and it causes a misplace of provision of God until repositioned. Amen? Repositioned. Listen, ungodly counsel is touching something unclean. Mal Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Your emotions love to give you counsel. <laughs> the world loves to give you counsel. It's amazing how many backsliders call another backslider for counsel. <laughs> hey, what do you think about this? Yeah, I'm agreeing with you. No kidding. Both of them demons are open to them now. Malachi 3, in verse 8. Is everybody there? Malachi 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Anybody interested in robbing God? <laughs> You'd be an idiot if you were. Will a man rob God? Yet yeah, you have robbed me. But you say, what have you robbed me? He said, in tithes and offerings, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out your such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in, in the field, says the Lord. All the nations will call you what? Blessed. Bless for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord. So you want to bring a curse? Continue to rob God. Amen? Amen. Robbing God of tithes and offerings puts a person out of position. Malachi chapter 2, why we're here. How many of y'all priests? Amen. Amen. Priest of the Lord. We are a priesthood. We are a nation of priesthood. That's the kingdom of God's nation. In verse 1, would you read it with me? And now, O priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not take it to what? Heart. If you will not take it to what? Heart. To give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts. I will send a what? Curse. curse upon you. And I will curse your what? Blessings. Yes, I have cursed them already because you did not take it to heart. You weren't serious about this. In other words, when he told you something, you said, no, I do nah, nah, nah. No problem. That blessing becomes a curse. Behold, I will rebuke your descendants and spread refuge on your faces the refuge of your solemn feasts, and, I, and one will take you away with it, and then you shall know that I have sent this commandment to you, that my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him of what? One of life and peace, and I gave them to him that he might fear me. 
So he feared me and was reverent before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, and injustice was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and turned many away from the iniquity. For the lips of a priest should what? Keep knowledge, and people should seek the law from his mouth. For he is a messenger of the Lord of hosts. Lord of hosts means Lord of the army. But you have departed from the way, and you have caused many to stumble at the law. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, I also have made you contemptible and base before all people, because you have not cut my ways and have, and have shown partiality in the Lord. Ooh, in the law. So we see a curse replace the blessing. Why? Not hearing, not receiving, and not giving them the glory, but rejecting to fulfill priesthood. In Hosea chapter 4. In verse 6. Hosea 4, 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. My people are what? They are what? They are destroyed for what? For lack of knowledge, lack of revelation, lack of understanding the ways of the Lord. He said, because you have rejected my knowledge, I have also rejected you from being a what? A priest for me. Wow. I'll reject you from being a priest. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. That means a generational curse will come down. The more they increase, the more they sin against me, he says. I will change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people. They set their heart on their iniquity. And it shall be like people, like priests. So I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their deeds. For they shall eat, but not have enough. They shall commit a holotry, but not increase. And because they have ceased obeying the Lord. Now this is powerful. He says they're going to be destroyed for lack of knowledge by rejecting the ways of the Lord. They're out of position and out of protection and falling out of provision. Does everybody get it? They've fallen into a place of survival and now they begin to fight for their life and not surrender it. That's a terrible state of being. That's where people fall into torment and fear. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy chapter one. Have you ever, you wanted, you know, there are a lot of beggars and so forth, and and you're going to run across a lot of people that are going to in want. And one of the things, hearing the voice of God is vitally important. Because somebody may come up to you and say, "Listen, man, can can I can you?" Give me this. Can you give me that or whatever? If you don't hear God's voice and know what to do, you may bless that person and kill that person and not even know it. And that blessing became a curse. Amen? You might have given that person something that could have killed him or harmed him or harmed someone else or caused that person to stumble. And that blessing then becomes a curse. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6. Therefore what? I remind you to do what? Stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Stir up the gift of God. Well, you stir up the gift of God by praying in the Spirit. You stir up the gift of God by worshiping and praising. and You stir up the gift of God. For God has not given us a what? Spirit. See, you're stirring up the gift of God by bringing the presence of God. Amen? The presence of God is what puts you in position. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but what? Power and love and a sound mind. So when the spirit of fear comes, <laughs> nullifies the power. Nullifies the sound mind, and then there's fear and torment and anxiety. Amen? And then there's not love. There's anger. There's frustration. 
And that immediately brings a person out of position. And that person is going, why, Lord, why don't I, why can't you this and this and why, why? They live a why of life. It's not Wi-Fi, it's why life. Why? They live a life of why because they're not in position. And God's going, why don't you do it? Why don't you get in position? Amen? Is everybody okay? I'm going to close it first, John. Fear. It's one of the major distractions that move many out of position because they can't trust God. And listen, if you're not a first striker, then you're going to be struck. You must first strike every morning. You must attack and pursue your enemy or he will come after you. Amen? So in this, they can't trust God. They're not a first striker and they lack discernment. Lack of discernment always brings trouble. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. We'll close here. Positional blessings. Let's speak it together. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the what? It's of the world. This is the influence of the world by the prince of power of error. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So he who does not do the will of God, will he abide forever? Heck no. Little children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. We are in the last hour. There's a lot of false Christians, a lot of false prophets and teachers, a lot of false doctrines, all kinds of things. It says that they went out from us, but they were not of us. For the, if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they may be made manifest that none of them were of us. But we have the what? Anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. You know what? All things. Remember, the anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. That is the anointing. And it's carried by the Holy Spirit. So we constantly want to stay filled and empowered by the anointing. We want to stay in position no matter what. No matter what distractions. Remember, fear is the number one distraction that comes. And of course, you got lost in everything else that comes and tries to distract us. And religion and all the other foolishness. It says we've been placed already with every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. Let's fulfill it by being positioned so positional blessings can be released. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.